It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Joe Curry, who is the head football coach for the St. Francis Fighting Saints from Joliet. Coach, a big win on Saturday. Now, I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to brag on Midwest Sportsnet and say, hey, we picked you in this one, even though the series record was 25 to one favoring St. Xavier coming in. Really thought you guys could pull this one off, and uh, it was dramatic to say the least, and and you spot them a few just to get started, but uh, a big win for the program, big win on Saturday, 36-29 over St. Xavier in overtime. Tell us a little bit about the game. Well, it was a good win for us. Um, you know, it, we just came out, I think, a little bit sluggish to begin with, but you got to give St. Xavier some credit, too. They um, they had a pretty good game plan to start out with. They hit us with a flea flicker on the first play and kind of got us on our heels a little bit, and, uh, you know, it took us a while, um, both – offensively, defensively, special teams wise to, to, you know, get into this, into the heart of the game. I did tell our guys, I said, listen, you're going to have to weather a storm at some point. I don't know when it's coming. Certainly didn't expect us to, for it to hit us right in the face to begin with, but it did. And, um, and we weathered the storm and you got to give our kids credit. They came back and never stopped fighting. And uh, we finally started making some plays um, offensively and, and figured out what, what we could do to stop them on defense and um and yeah the kids just kept believing and uh, of all the things that in this you know saga i know you call it a rivalry i particularly don't like to call it that because usually in a rivalry the other team you, you win some and you said it we're one in 25 versus them prior to this so um we're really not winning any of those but uh it's been some close games over the past couple of years and something that uh you know for our kids um we were in another one of those and there in the fourth quarter i mean we we drive down the field and have a chance at a game-winning field goal with about two minutes ago we get it blocked they go down the length of the field have a chance with a game-winning field goal as time expired and they missed it so it's just you know part of what's been happening here over the past five six years there's always twists and turns and things that go on that you really don't expect and um, at the end of the day, I got to give credit to our kids because they were resilient and they played hard and, and they never quit. And we came out on top. Well, Coach, I agree with you. I, I I'll go with Saga. We'll we'll talk up we'll talk about Saga throughout the remainder of of this video at least. But I have to ask then: Have you ever had a flea flicker run on the first play from scrimmage before? Is that ever, anything you've ever seen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's been teams who have done that, and whether it's a flea flicker, a double pass, like something of that nature. That's a trick play. Um, you know, we, we have seen it say Xavier, they've, they've done that to us in the past not on, not necessarily on the first play, but they're notorious for double passes, for reverses, mm -hmm. for, you know, the trick plays. And we, we practice some of those. I will tell you, honestly, we, we did not practice a flea flicker, <laughs> all right. but, um, but we, you know, we try to prepare for all those things and, uh, you know, they just got us on the first play and it kind of set the tone for them early. Um, and, uh, you know, and then we were able to finally settle down and battle back and, uh, and, and do some good things. Sam Tumulty, 21 for 30 passing, 70% completion rate, 242 passing yards, had a pair of passing touchdowns, had a pair of rushing touchdowns as well. Uh, obviously in a game in which you 29 points get you to overtime, then he's responsible for four touchdowns in that. Talk about his game. Uh, he just continues to continues to impress. Um, he's, he's a different, different player. Um, and he rises in big opportunities and, uh, wants the ball in his hand. And, um, and we trust him to, to do that. Um, uh, actually, to be honest with you, we, uh, just one of the things that, that he does, he's been on our offense for so long. Um, the two point play to tie it late in the game, he called his own play, you know, so, and it worked. So um, one of the things that we that we kind of um, harp, harp on is, hey, trust, you know, Sam, I trust you. Go go make a play for us. And and that's what he's that's what he's been doing. And, uh, you know, I got to give credit to to the, to him and to our offense. And, you know, we had Scotty, his brother, at tailback basically the whole second half as well. So um, they kind of they kind of let us back from where we were where we were down early. We're visiting now with Coach Joe Curry from St. Z uh, St. Francis. Excuse me, we mentioned St. Xavier a little earlier. St. Francis, the Fighting Saints, who have just one loss on the schedule right now. Another big win this past Saturday, 36-29 in overtime over St. Xavier. And trailed by 22 a couple of times in that game, 22-0 and then 29-7 just before the half. 
Coach, you mentioned Scott Tumulty. Is there anything he doesn't or can't do? I'm, I'm not going to say can't do because I'm pretty sure he could do all of it and probably sell popcorn in the stands while he's at it. But uh, I, I want to read the numbers, make sure I get them right. Leading rusher on the team, 62 yards, 19 receiving yards as well, 21 punt return yards, 42 kickoff return yards. He had three tackles too and a pretty important pass breakup in the contest as well. Just some incredible numbers. Yeah, well, it was one of those things. And, and honestly, you know, uh, our offensive coordinator, Coach McCarthy, came to me at half and said, hey, can we use Sam or Scotty to play tailback the first drive of the second half? I'm like, sure. And then we scored on that. And he he looked at me and goes, hey, do I get Scotty a tailback the rest of the game? I said, yep. <laughs> and, uh, um, and then our DC, you know, Coach Miller, then he's like, hey, do we got to give Scotty a rest on defense? And and I just walked up to Scotty and I just said, I said, hey, man, you're you're he's he's not the most vocal guy, but he was he's been in my ear for a couple of years now. Just, hey, coach, I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. And like you said, probably sell popcorn, too. But um, I just walked up to him. I said, I said, hey, you wanted it. It's yours. Go go get it. And so we just we played him both ways and ran him till he was ragged. But uh, he had blood all over his uniform. He was bleeding from an elbow. Oh, and and he was just. It was just one of those performances, and he he went and got it for us. So, another guy who did really really good. That makes the post game pictures that much more impressive too. You know, if you got blood all over you, and you come out after a game like that, that's going to be one for the for the scrapbook and one for everyone to remember. Absolutely, right. Coach. I, I'm going to ask both of these in one question. I think both stats weren't mentioned. I'll let you address them. the The Saints did not give us give up a sack in this game and did not have to punt in this game as well. Talk a little bit about that. And uh, I think those are, are especially in combination, uh, a, a big-time key stat to a win. Yeah, I think so. I, I really think the key for us, we had really been struggling the last two weeks to really run the football. And we were able to run for 145 yards on Saturday, and I believe because of that, um, that really – slowed them down in the pass rush game because um, they couldn't just pin their ears back and go. And, uh, and our line did a good job. Um, they played hard. They were, they were dead tired too. And they were, they were doing a heck of a job. And, and Sam as mobile as he is at times, you know, he's um, there, there's times where we do give up sacks, but Saturday it just all worked out. I think the running game had a, had a big part to do with that. Um, and then we, we managed to play some good third down offense. Um, another th- thing that we have been struggling with over the past couple of weeks. And it seemed like, you know, there wasn't very many third and shorts either. There was a couple of them, but we were converting on third and seven, third and eight, third and 10. And I remember I called for punt numerous times, but like you said, we never had to go out and execute it. And, um, and which is something that's good. Uh, you know, our offense was moving the ball and, and using, it's one thing to move the ball and just go first down, first down, first down. But we were going first down, second down, third down, first down, second down, third down, and that weighs on a defense. And um, and and sometimes, you know, you know, in, in in the sport of football, you ask an that's what a defense wants to do. You ask an offense to keep going first, second, third down, first, second, third down. Eventually, the offense is going to screw up and um, have to punt or you know give up a sack or do something. And, and we just did not do those things on Saturday. So those, that, that, that obviously helped us. I hope that you all get time this week as much as can be afforded in, in a week to week schedule to get some rest. It's, it sounds like everything was left on the line on Saturday that in mind, then the schedule does continue. You have Judson coming up this week at home. And it is also one of uh, one of three, of the last four games that are at home for the Saints. So talk about the, the Judson game a little bit, and and uh, do you feel like that there is any time to rest, or are they just uh, no rest for the weary and get back out there and do it again? Yeah, I know it's, you know, coach talk and all those different things, but it's, um, you know, if if we want to be a championship-level team and be the team that we think we can be, we can't pick and choose when to play and when not to play. You know, we got an opponent coming in here on Saturday um, that – being around college football as long as I have. And, and it, you know, there is no gimmies. There is none of you got to go out and play. And uh, it's never more evident than, you know, at, at the big time college football level, you know, um, Alabama, Georgia, Alabama beats, you know, Georgia in one of the biggest wins of the season in college football. Then the very next week they go lose to Vanderbilt. 
you know, so um, those things are all possible. That's what happens. That's what happens when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year old kids. And um, so, no, we got to we got a game this Saturday. So we got to prepare and we got to go out there and go one and all like our goal is every single week. And I know, you know, you'd, you'd like to hear me say rest and those sort of things, but we'll get all the rest we need at the end of the year. <laughs> right now, it's time to play. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate hearing that as well, Coach Judson on Saturday for the St. Francis Fighting Saints. Coach Joe Curry, who has been on the channel with me a number of times now, I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Success to the, you the remainder of the season and, and uh, with hopes for the postseason ahead of you. But congratulations this past week on a big time overtime win in a saga with St. Xavier, second win in the series. And, and I know it had to be big. Coach, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, and thank you for all you do for NAI football.